Hey everyone and welcome back to the Deep Dive. Are you ready to uh, plunge into another mystery of the cosmos? Today we're tackling a question that has been puzzling physicists for decades. Do black holes really have singularities? You know, those points of infinite density where gravity goes haywire and the laws of physics as we know them, well, kind of break down. It's a mind-boggling concept, and for a long time, most physicists thought the answer was a pretty straightforward yes. But, as with so many things in science, it turns out things aren't so simple. We've got some really fascinating research that challenges this traditional view of singularities. And to help us sort through it all, we have with us today a true expert in the field who brings a unique perspective to this debate. So let's start with the basics. The idea that black holes contain these points of infinite density called singularities has been around for a while now. It all started with the work of some brilliant minds like Roger Penrose and Stephen Hawking and their famous singularity theorem. But hold on to your hats because here's the twist. One of the pioneers of black hole research, a physicist named Roy Kerr, is now challenging this very idea. And get this, he's using his own groundbreaking work to do it. Back in 1963, Kerr developed something called the Kerr metric, which is a mathematical description of rotating black holes. It was a huge breakthrough, and to this day, physicists still use the Kerr metric to study these enigmatic objects. But now Kerr is saying something truly mind-blowing. His own equations suggest that singularities might not be inevitable inside these rotating black holes. So how did we get from a seemingly settled idea to this fascinating challenge? Well, to understand Kerr's argument, we first need to understand the reasoning behind the traditional singularity theorem. Right, so the Penrose-Hawking singularity theorem is all about what happens inside a black hole, and it relies heavily on the concept of trapped surfaces. Imagine a region of space-time where gravity is so intense that nothing, not even light, can escape. That's a trapped surface. It's like, uh, like a cosmic one-way street. Once you cross the boundary, there's no turning back. Okay, so the event horizon of a black hole is a prime example of a trapped surface. Precisely. And the singularity theorem essentially says that inside a trapped surface like this, the paths of light rays must have a finite length. They can't just go on forever. So they have to end somewhere. Exactly. And according to the theorem, the only way these finite paths can end is by converging at a single point, a singularity. So the logic is light gets tracked, its path has to end somewhere, and that somewhere has to be a singularity. Is that right? Yeah, you got it. And for a long time, this seemed like a pretty solid argument. But um, what Kerr is suggesting is that there might be another possibility, another way for those light rays to have finite paths inside a black hole without ever actually hitting a singularity. And the key to this, he believes, lies in the nature of rotating black holes. And this is where it gets really interesting, right? Kerr found that in rotating black holes, light rays can actually be tangential to the event horizon meaning they sort of circle around it without ever crossing it. It's kind of like, imagine you're on one of those moving walkways at the airport, but you decide to walk in the opposite direction of the walkway's motion. You're putting in effort, you're covering a distance, but you're not actually going anywhere relative to the people standing around. Ah, uh, that's a great analogy. Well, these light rays, according to Kerr, are doing something similar inside a rotating black hole. They're moving, they have a finite path length, but they're not ending up at a singularity. They're sort of caught in this perpetual loop around the event horizon. And this, of course, challenges the traditional view. It suggests that the key assumption in the singularity theorem that all finite light paths must end in a singularity, well, maybe that doesn't necessarily hold true for rotating black holes. This throws open so many questions. What does this mean for our understanding of black holes and of the universe itself? Well, on one hand, Kerr's challenge doesn't completely rule out the existence of singularities. They might still form under certain conditions, who knows? But what's truly groundbreaking is that it throws open a whole new set of questions and possibilities. It forces us to take a step back and re-examine what we thought we knew about these incredibly dense, mysterious objects. It raises this fascinating idea, this possibility, that the core of a black hole might be something even more bizarre and intriguing than a singularity. So we've got this incredible back and forth playing out the classic singularity theorem versus Kerr's challenge, based on his own work on rotating black holes. Hmm. It's a scientific debate with, uh, well, with huge implications. But this is really just the tip of the iceberg. Join us next week as we, uh, as we dive deeper into some of the truly mind-blowing possibilities for what might be lurking at the heart of a black hole if it's not a singularity. Last time we were talking about Roy Kerr's challenge to the singularity idea, right? Yeah, his work on those rotating black holes, suggesting that those infinitely dense points, the singularities, 
might not always be there. Right, right. And even if we uh, entertain that possibility that some black holes may be formed without singularities, there's this other wrinkle, this idea that a singularity could still pop up later, even if it wasn't there at the beginning. Oh, so even if a black hole starts off without a singularity, it could develop one later on. That's what some physicists are thinking. And this brings us to... Um, well, it brings us to the concept of the Kochi horizon. Okay, the Kochi horizon. What's that all about? It's another kind of boundary you find inside a rotating black hole, different from the event horizon. You know, the point of no return, the one we talked about last time. So beyond the event horizon, there's this other horizon, the Kochi horizon. Yep. The Kochi horizon is, well, it's a bit stranger. Beyond it, things get really unpredictable, even weirder than inside a regular black hole. How so? Well... Our current understanding of physics, it just can't tell us what happens beyond the Kochi horizon. The future, it becomes, um, well, kind of fuzzy. So crossing the event horizon is a one-way ticket to oblivion, but crossing the Kochi horizon, anything goes. Not exactly anything goes, but the idea is that the Kochi horizon, it might not be stable. Even the smallest disturbance, the tiny ripple, could make it collapse. And when it collapses, what happens? Well, that's when the singularity might form, even if it wasn't there before. Ah, so Kerr's idea, the rotating black holes without singularities, it's not a sure thing. This Kochi horizon could mess things up. That's the thinking behind the strong cosmic censorship conjecture. It's this idea that the universe, it has a way of, um, well, it has a way of keeping things from getting too crazy. Too crazy even for black holes. Right. It's like even if you form a black hole without a singularity at first, you can't avoid it forever. You got to have one somewhere. The universe likes its singularities. Seems like it. So even tiny, tiny changes in a black hole structure could lead to, well, lead to the formation of a singularity. So a black hole forming from, I don't know, from something perfectly smooth, perfectly round, maybe it could avoid a singularity. But mm -hmm. anything realistic... Any black hole born from a real star collapsing, yeah. that's going to have a singularity. Probably. Though, of course, it's still a conjecture and not a proven fact. Okay, so we've gone from the traditional singularity theorem to Kerr's challenge to this idea that singularities might form later. Because this Kochi horizon is kind of unstable. Huh? It's a lot to wrap our heads around. It is, isn't it? But the biggest takeaway, I think, is that we're still figuring out what happens inside these black holes. So we still don't know for sure if singularities are a thing. Kerr's work, it doesn't definitely say they don't exist, but it does open up, well, it opens up a whole new world of possibilities. And that's what's so exciting. It's not just about what's inside a black hole, right? It's about, uh, it's about what it means for our understanding of, well, everything. Exactly. If singularities aren't inevitable, maybe our theories of gravity need some work. Maybe there's even physics beyond general relativity. Who knows? Okay, so uh, let's talk about that. If singularities aren't the only option, what else could be lurking at the heart of a black hole? That's where things get really interesting and really speculative. Our listeners love speculation. Lay it on us. What are the possibilities? Well, one idea is that instead of a singularity, the center of a black hole might be something like um, an incredibly dense kind of matter, exotic matter. So not a point of infinite density, yeah. but something still incredibly dense but finite. Something we could at least try to wrap our heads around. Yeah. What would this matter even be like? It's hard to say. We're talking about conditions that are, well, they're beyond anything we've ever observed. Think about neutron stars, which are already incredibly dense. This, uh, it could be even denser, maybe made of particles we haven't even discovered yet. It's like instead of a cosmic trash compactor crushing everything to a point, it's more like a, uh, a cosmic pressure cooker creating something totally new. That's a great way to put it. Maybe the extreme conditions inside a black hole, they could create a kind of matter that just, well, that defies everything we know. Okay, super dense matter. That's one possibility. Mm -hmm. Any other wild ideas out there? Oh, there are. Some physicists have even proposed that uh, that the center of a black hole could be a portal to another universe, a wormhole. Wormholes, yeah. like those... Uh... Those cosmic shortcuts you see in science fiction. Exactly. And I should emphasize, this is very speculative. But there are some solutions to Einstein's equations, the equations of general relativity that, well, they do allow for wormholes. So it's not completely impossible. I mean, those equations got to be telling us something about the universe, right? Yeah. They do. But those same equations also predict singularities. So we have to be careful. The math is a guide, but it's not the whole story. We need more than just equations to know for sure if wormholes are real, let alone if they could form inside black holes. Wormholes. 
Fascinating, but definitely needs more research. What else is on the table? Well, there's another idea that the inside of a black hole might be this region of, well, of quantum foam, a chaotic, constantly changing kind of space time where our usual ideas about space and time, they just, well, they break down. Quantum foam. That sounds even more bizarre than wormhole. It is. The idea is that at really tiny scales, space time itself is not smooth. It's more like um, it's bubbly and constantly fluctuating. And inside a black hole, those fluctuations could get amplified, creating a region where, well, where reality is just fundamentally different. So we've gone from super dense matter to wormholes to quantum foam. Are we missing any other crazy ideas? Probably tons more out there. The point is, the question of what's inside a black hole, it's still one of the biggest mysteries in physics. And it sounds like we've only just begun to explore the possibility. That's for sure. And we're back for the final part of our deep dive into those cosmic enigmas, black holes. Uh. Over the past two weeks, we've been wrestling with this question, this really big question of whether black holes actually have singularities, those points of, well, of infinite density where, uh, where physics as we know it just kind of goes out the window. We started with that classic singularity theorem, right? The one that says singularities are like an inevitable part of how black holes form. Right. But then we got into Roy Kerr's work and how he's challenging that idea using his research on rotating black holes to suggest that maybe singularities aren't a sure thing after all. Right, and that opens up all these other possibilities for what might be at the center of a black hole. And we talked about some of those mind-blowing possibilities last time, like uh, super dense matter, maybe even wormholes connecting to other universes. We even touched on that idea of quantum foam. So with all these wild ideas on the table, where do we go from here? How do we, uh, how do we go from just speculating to actually understanding what's going on inside these black holes. Well, that's the uh, that's the big challenge, isn't it? It's going to take both theoretical breakthroughs, you know, coming up with new ideas and advances in observational astronomy. We need better ways to actually see what's happening out there. So we need better theories and better telescopes. Basically, yeah. On the theoretical side, we need to come up with models that can describe those extreme conditions inside a black hole. Maybe even models that go beyond Einstein's general relativity. And what about the observations? Well, we need more powerful telescopes, of course. Instruments that can probe deeper into the universe, gather more data about these black holes. We need to look for clues, you know, any kind of indirect evidence that can tell us what's happening beyond the event horizon. So it's a two-pronged attack. Push the theory forward and at the same time, build better tools to actually observe these things. Exactly. And there's actually some really cool stuff happening on both fronts. For example, scientists are working on new ways to detect gravitational waves. Gravitational waves, those ripples in space-time. Yeah, those. They're caused by massive objects like black holes. And by studying these waves, we might be able to learn about the structure of black holes, learn things we could never learn before. Gravitational waves, huh? That sounds like a topic for another deep dive. Yeah. But uh, for now, let's stick with the singularity debate. So if singularities aren't like a guaranteed thing, does that change how we think about the universe? Does it change our fundamental understanding? It could, yeah. Singularities have always been a bit of a... Um a bit of a headache for physicists. There are a point where our theory is just, well, they sort of break down. We can't predict what happens there. Right. But if we can describe what's inside a black hole without singularities, well, that could be huge. It could change how we understand gravity, space time, yeah. maybe even the nature of reality itself. So in a way, this whole debate about singularities, it's forcing us to confront the limits of what we know, right? Yeah. Pushing us to come up with new ideas. Yeah, I think that's a great way to put it. Okay, so as we wrap up this deep dive, what are the uh, what are the key takeaways here? Well, first, that long-held belief that all black holes must have singularities, it's being challenged. Roy Kerr's work, along with other new research, it's making us rethink things. Right. Second, we still don't know for sure what's inside a black hole. It's still a huge mystery. We talked about some pretty wild possibilities, but we're really just scratching the surface. And third. Third, this whole debate is driving black hole research forward. It's pushing scientists to develop new theories, to build better instruments, to find new ways to study these fascinating objects. It's really amazing to think about all the incredible discoveries that might be just around the corner. Maybe someday we'll finally solve the mystery of what's at the heart of a black hole. Well, that wraps up our deep dive into the mysterious world of black holes. Big thanks to our expert for taking us on this incredible journey. And to all our listeners out there, thanks for joining us. We hope you learned something new and maybe even had your mind blown a few times along the way. 
If you enjoyed this deep dive, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. And until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep looking up at those stars.